This is the second experiment in the motors and generators topic. We're going to be demonstrating uh, the generation of an electric current by moving a magnet near and in, in or out of a coil and near a coil. Okay? We're also going to be investigating the effect of uh, magnet strength, the speed of motion between the coil and the magnet, um, number of turns of the coil, things like that, on, on the, um, the EMF generator. Okay? So the effect of those variables on the EMF generator. So what I have here is a 300 turn Coil, right? It's just it's just made of um, it's just made of copper wire. Right? It's obviously insulated. It's transparent insulated. So these are just coils, just normal coils, 300 turns. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to simply um, connect it to my um, my multimeter here. Now a multimeter is in effect the same as an ammeter and a voltmeter. It just depends on which mode you set. So so if I set it like say in this range, it's a voltmeter. It measures volts. If I set it, um, and where's the? Here's, here's the current. If I set it here, somewhere here, then it's an ammeter. Okay. So, if you're writing up an ex experimental procedure for an exam, or whatever, just say ammeter. Okay. Because we're trying to measure the amps, or, or you can say voltmeter. It really doesn't matter because remember, V equals I R. Both V and I are um, linearly proportional. So, if one goes up, the other one goes up by the same. So what I've set up here is I've basically connected my 300 turn coil to an ammeter. All right? And I've set the ammeter to 50 microamps because that's the most sensitive setting I have and the actual amount of power generated by moving a magnet in and out is, is going to be tiny. So that's why I need something like this. I need, I need it on, this, on the lower setting. Um, so when I move, this is, uh, and by the way, I've got here a really strong magnet and a normal weak bar magnet. Okay, let's start with the weak magnet. Here is my coil and here's my um, ammeter. All right. Watch what happens when I do this. When I put the magnet in, you, see, you notice the needle went up to about, about um, just under the 100 mark, so let's do it again. No, about halfway to the 100 mark. There's, here's the 100 mark, it's about halfway. Okay. We don't really care about the, um, the actual number of amps generated because that depends on many things. It depends, depends on how strong my magnet is, how many turns, um, what the setting is, and etc. But okay, so, but just for a comparison scale, it went to about half. All right. And do you know why? You have to also understand why. When I put the magnet in, it moves. But when I leave it in, it doesn't move. And then when I take it out, it moves again. So if I move the magnet, during the movement, there is current being generated. When there's no movement, even if the magnetic field is inside the coil, no current is generated because there's no change in flux. Now what happens if I... Um, what do you think will happen if I vary the, um, the speed at which I move the magnet? If I go faster, then it should more current should be produced. So let's go slow. So it only went to about there, uh, about the halfway mark. If I go faster, slightly higher. You can see slightly higher. First thing we're going to test is the distance between the coil and the magnet, if the distance is varied. Now obviously, um, you would think that the further the magnet away it is away from the coil, the less of current is produced. So let's test that. If Let's use the stronger magnet because this is too weak. All right? So for this variable, we're going to use the stronger magnet. If I leave it here and then I move it from here, you can still see the wiggle. You can still see the needle wiggle. If I stop, see it stops wiggling. So obviously it's because of the induced current. Okay. If I move closer, if I move closer to the coil, do you see the wiggle is now bigger? You see the wiggle is now bigger? If I move it away, the wiggle is tiny. Okay, so firstly, distance is inversely proportional to the amount of EMF produced, induced, in this setup, right? The second thing we're going to test 
is the strength of the magnet. If the strength of the magnet is varied and everything else kept constant, relatively constant, right? Obviously, because I'm doing it by hand, um, there's, there's other ways, there's better ways to do it. If you want to really design a proper experiment, you would probably not use a human hand to, you know, um, move the magnet in and out because you can't really precisely control the speed at which you move one magnet at a time. So you will probably, if you wanted to do it more accurately, use a motor, you measure everything out. Um, but for the purposes of this, we're only after quanti qualitative information. Um, it should be okay. Okay, so I'm going to try to keep the motion constant, the, you know, how fast I move it in constant and also everything else is the same. And the same magnet. Oh no, we'll vary the magnet. Because we're trying to see the effect of um, the chain, a change in the variation in magnetic field strength on the EMF produced. So, let's start with the weak magnet. This is the weak bar magnet, okay? No movement. As soon as I push it in, it'll move. Oops. So it went went up to about um, you know the halfway mark, okay? The halfway mark. What happens when I put two of these together, like this? Then theoretically, it should be twice as strong. Now it probably won't induce twice as much current, but we should definitely see an increase if we keep the speed the same. It's a bit hard because. So that's obviously big, that's greater than 100. See, it went up to like 150. All right, so that's about double, or it's actually slightly more than double. Um, maybe because of variation in, in the speed or whatever, but definitely when you increase the strength of the magnetic field, you see an increase in EMF induced. Let's, let's use our strongest magnet. This is a neodymium magnet, right? The strongest, strongest type of permanent magnet. They use these in um, medical equipment and also high-end headphones and things like that. Um, so, I'll push it in at the same speed. Oops. Okay, so definitely higher than when we use the single magnet. The third thing we're going to test is when what happens when we vary the speed at which the magnet moves relative to the core. Okay? Um, now, what we think would happen, well I know the answer, um, is the faster you move it, the greater the EMF will be induced. Okay? So let's test our hypothesis. So the reason why I'm, do I'm doing like this is because I feel like um, if I can poke the magnet all the way through, I get a better reading because the table stops it and the momentum of the pin, the, the needle, gets stopped, um, which doesn't give us an accurate reading. So this is probably a better way to do it. Okay? So the first try, I'm going to go slowly, and the second try, I'm going to go faster, and we'll see any difference in EMF produced. First trial is very slow, so let's see what happens. Okay, so that barely moved at all, probably half, or about 50, the 50 mark, halfway. Second trial, go faster. Definitely much higher, okay? So, slow. And then high. Definitely higher. So, what have we demonstrated so far? We've demonstrated the generation of an electric current by moving a, magnetic, um, a magnet near a coil, which we've done. Right? We've also investigated the effect of varying the distance at which we move the magnet from the coil, the speed at which we move the magnet from the coil, and the magnetic field strength. Right? To summarize, just to recap, the greater the distance, the lower the EMF, right? because the change in flux is smaller because you're far away. Um, and vice versa, the closer you are, the greater the change in flux you're producing over the coil, which produces a greater EMF. Magnet magnetic field strength, again, um, the stronger the magnetic field, the more EMF will be produced, given equal, equal motion, equal speed, everything, equal distance and speed. Again, because the greater your change in flux, the greater your induced EMF. And the last one would be the speed. Um, again, the greater the speed, the more vigorous the change in flux. The greater the change in flux happens in a smaller amount of time. And lastly, we tested the speed at which we move the magnets near the coil. The faster we move the magnets, the greater the change in flux, which means the greater the induced EMF. One more thing I want to test, I want to show you guys, is um, what happens if we change the um, 
change the, the, the number of turns in the coil. The red one is 300 turns, the blue one is 600 turns. Okay, so again, same as before, just um, copper wire looped 600 times. So, let's test the red one first. Given everything equal, I'll use the same magnet. Same speed. Put up to about 150. About 150, okay? Now, what happens when I swap it to the blue coil, which is twice the number of turns? We should expect a greater induced EMF. Let's see if that's true. Oops. Wrong polarity. Oh, you see that? Much greater. The reason is because more turns means the coil effectively experiences a greater change in flux. Much greater, much greater than this. 